After looking quite similar for years if not decades, mainstream 3D animation is now looking for new and creative ways to stylize their visuals beyond realism. We can fit all these new and creative 2D-ish looks under the umbrella of NPR or non-photorealistic rendering. Although all these styles look very different from each other, they all have one thing in common, and that is that they all make heavy use of perhaps the most overlooked aspect of 3D creation, and that is compositing. And that's what we are here to talk about. <laughs> Hi, my name is Pawoms, and I'm a professional lighting and compositing artist in the animation industry, currently working at Walt Disney Animation. Thanks for joining me in this tutorial series. Making 2D looking things in compositing makes a lot of sense, because at the end of the day, compositing is just using 2D to post-process your renders. Plus, by using compositing, you're acting on your image as a whole, free from the restrictions of singular geometries or materials, and it can render quite faster. The only drawback is that you generally need to take your renders to a dedicated compositing software to do that. Or do you? With Blender 4.3 comes the Multipass Viewport Compositor for Eevee. This new feature means that we can now composite in the same viewport where we light, where we animate and where we set up our 3D scenes. In my experiments, I found this new way of working incredibly useful for NPR, basically allowing you to make more creative decisions faster. And, judging by the reactions to my experiments, the industry is taking note of that too. In this tutorial series, we're going to be using the Multipass Viewport Compositor to create a bunch of different render styles, and we're also going to be covering the basics of compositing in Blender so that you can create all your styles you have in mind. This set of tutorials does not require any previous knowledge about compositing, but will assume a general knowledge of Blender's UI and how rendering and materials work inside of Blender. With that out of the way, let's begin! Hello and welcome to this Blender Compositor for NPR tutorial series. Uh, in this introduction, I want to, before getting into the depths of NPR and stuff, cover a bit the basics of the Blender Compositor, what the viewport compositor is, how it's going to help us to make it real time, and how this new uh, feature in Blender 4.3, the multipass aspect of it, is really the game changer for these kind of use cases. And if you stick with me through all that, which can be a bit thick, by the end I'll show you how to do a simple NPR style with just one node that you all will be able to do. So, follow me, uh, welcome, and First, how the uh, compositor works. So to start using the compositor, I'm going to split my view and make the bottom one to be a compositor tab. So we start by checking use nodes. And what that does is to uh, bring us these two nodes. This first node represents what um, the render engine, EV in this case, is uh, rendering out. And this node represents what Blender is going to write out as a file. And by the way, talking about scenes, I have this scene prepared, um, which is basic scene. It's EV, it's running in real time. Uh, it's got a bunch of lights and it's animated, which we're going to use later. But at the time, uh, for now, this is what's happening. Uh, Blender is, so EV is rendering and what gets here, it's what's being written out. And what's in between here is going to be the subject of our interest, what's going to happen in the compositing. Um, so right now, it's rendering out exactly what um, um, EV is rendering. If in between these two, I were to drop a blur node, for instance, and I don't know, make it blur by 40 pixels in each direction, and I render out, it's going to first um, render out the scene in EV, then blur it, then write it out. And that's basically the compositor. Uh, you can do effects on top of your images, as if it were Photoshop, but with more power, which I'll come to in a second. Then there's the viewport compositor, uh, because Blender has this feature that allows you to preview what's happening in the viewport, sorry, in the compositor on your viewport. The way we activate it is by going to the viewport shading tab on your rendered view, and under Compositor, select Camera or Always. Selecting Camera will make it appear on your camera but not on your view, and selecting Always will make it always uh, blurred, which is always what you're having here. Um, and now, as you can see, we can navigate, and in real time, 
we can see uh, the output of our compositor. And talking about real time, there's something you have to know, and that is that while it's using your GPU for um, uh, compositing the viewport, it's by default using your CPU to um, render out your final renders. And for a blur, it might be fine, but for crazier graphs like we're gonna make in this series of tutorials, we're gonna need uh, all the speed we can get. So uh, you you can set your uh, GPU to be used for your final rendering under options and device GPU. This basically is CPU by default because if you were not, for the same reason that Cycles is set to CPU by default, uh, because if you don't set up your GPU correctly, it might uh, give some issues, but it's basically a no drawback scenario. Use the G GPU, it's faster. And with that, everything's set up and it's ready for us to do some compositing. Notes I use all the time are, for example, the glare note. Glare note, uh, which allows us to uh, do some bloom, which um, is an option that is now part of the compositor and before it was part of a render settings in, in Eevee. And it allows you to um, select various sizes, make it um, smaller and all those things. I generally also like to drop a vignette, 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 the uh, darken edges thing <laughs> in my renders. The way I do that is by using, um, similar to what you would do in Photoshop or Krita, adding a layer on top, set it to multiply and darken the edges. Um, we can do that in the compositor. Uh, we can do that with a node that's called a mix node. And right now it's mixing between our image and white. And it's basically blending between the two. We can set it to multiply. That way, now it's multiplying by white, but it could multiply by red, but green, but blue, and, and you can get all these uh, sort of effects. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna keep it white. And I'm gonna drop in an ellipse mask. Uh, the ellipse mask is basically a node that draws uh, an ellipse on your image. I'm gonna set up uh, the height and width of my canvas and plug it in here. And now we're multiplying this. Um, it's gonna be white means multiplying by one means doing nothing and zero means multiplying by zero which means uh, making it black. So this operation results on this um, ellipse being drawn on top of our render, which isn't that pretty, but we can blur this. Um, this mask, I don't know, by 100 pixels? No, more, 400. And now we have this sort of appealing uh, vignette effect, which I can lower because no vignette is that strong, I think, hopefully. And now with M, I can see the before and after by toggling the, um, the visibility of our um, operation. Another thing I can do, and by, oh, by the way, I'm uh, control shift clicking, same thing as in the shaders for the viewer. Um, another thing I generally do is the, uh, is doing some color corrections. Um, you can use tons of nodes for that, but I like the hue, saturation and value. It allows me to push the saturation um, in a general scene basis, uh, darken and increase the value. I like it also because the, decreasing the saturation, it can help me evaluate the values of my scene. Um, but yeah, tons of stuff that you can do. Um, but now it comes up to the multipass aspect of it, which is the fun part. Because all that we could do uh, up until Blender 4.2, but since we have Blender 4.3, we can now do something new, which is adding... Um, adding passes to our viewport compositor. I think right now it's only possible to do it in Eevee, but I'm sure it's gonna be possible in cycles in the future. Um, so the way we do that is by going to our um, view layer uh, tab in the properties panel and under passes, all of these checkboxes represent information that Eevee can write out besides our, um, our beauty render, the result of our, uh, of our lights and our materials. These passes give us information that we can use to, um, again, tweak our image. 
For example, something I really like is to use the Z pass, which is our depth pass. I'm going to duplicate that uh, just for comfort. Um, and the depth pass gives us a, a value for um, for how long the pixel it's representing is from the camera. So if it's 0 0.5 meters away from the camera, it'll be mid gray. If it's one meter away from the camera, it'll be white. And the particularity of this and how the compositor differs from, say, Photoshop by default, is that um, the images can go be, uh, below uh, and sorry, above one. So an image can have a value of two, of three, and still make sense. Uh, the way I can demonstrate that is by dropping a map range node and see how um, instead of going from uh, 0 to 1, and keep, I can make this image go from 0 to, I don't know, what, 10? And now we, we can see that there was, we couldn't see the window before, but now we can because there's range above 1. And now we can use this image, this mask, to um, affect and color correct our image. Say I want to make it uh, desaturated uh, as it goes away from the camera. Uh, so the way I can do that is by dropping a hue saturation value node, um, set it to saturation 0, and most nodes have this value, which is called the FAC, which if you've used um, Nuke, for example, it's basically what the mask input in most nodes do. Thus, uh, <laughs> is uh, basically you can plug a mask to it and have it drive uh, the uh, the influence of this node. Now we're getting some weirdness here, and that's because um, our map range node is not clamped. When we're doing math that goes below um, zero and one, we can lose track because our screen is not uh, available to um, display these values, we can lose track of what, what's happening. So this clamp value assures that whatever is outputted of a node is um, basically reduced, chopped to uh, what's happening between 0 and 1, so basically what your screen can see. And that's very useful because in masks uh, everything we can accept is between 0 and 1. Everything be, uh, above one can produce weird results. So now we can have our scene uh, be desaturated as, as it goes along. I can accentuate that, um, that effect by bringing the values closer together and doing this mask. And see, we're, we're compositing. So that's the basics of it. And in the next episodes, we're going to use all these tools and more to create more and more complex effects. But as promised, um, since you stuck for the entirety of the video, I'm going to show you how to recreate a painterly style with just one node. Uh, and this node is going to be the Kuahara node. It's basically, I think it was born as a denoising algorithm, but it, uh, it basically blurs in a weird way where it tries to simplify the image and get rid of the high frequency detail, which is kind of what you do with um, with painting. Um, by default, the classic uh, produces this uh, choppy result, which we, we can increase with, uh, with the value, but the anisotropic value is my favorite because it kind of tries to re uh, respect the shapes of a render, and you can see now it's looking a bit more fun. Um, I can go further, 30, and see how it now starts to break in a fun way, where uh, everything starts looking a bit more painterly. You can play with that, those parameters to make it more I don't know, eccentric, sharp. Um, and you can see now everything is still sort of real time, and we can orbit around. I'm pushing it a bit hard, but you can see how uh, this dynamic of lighting and compositing at the same time can be really, really powerful. And it can do things that shaders, for example, can't, where by blurring this, these values of the bed are blending in with our uh, cushion here. 
um, and these values of the cushion are blending in with the um, with the um, wall, and it's all giving crazy results. They are very artistic, and I'm sure it'll do you you very good to understand all of these concepts. So follow me for part two of this, and see you soon. Thank you.